Hi everybody, it's Marianne, it's so right. And today I'm gonna to be talking about embroidery, but couching yarn while it's embroidering. And I'm gonna be working on the Brother Luminaire 3. The machine has designs that are built into it specifically for yarn couching. I'm sure there's other ways of doing yarn couching with other designs, but that's something to be talked about on another time. I had done the design with the couching some time ago, and I did, I had to do a little refresher. So what you do is you go into the question mark, and then you go to the manual, and then you choose whether you wanna do sewing or embroidery, and I went to embroidery. And I wanted to find the area, the part of the manual that had the information about couching. So in the search, I typed in couching. And that's there, and I said search. It took me to the in the contents, and down here, if you, if you look real close, couching is highlighted in yellow. Now what you could do is just zoom into your screen. And there, it is. so it's there. So it's on page 118. So then what I do is I go to this tab, touch this one, and I type in page 118. And I say, okay, it takes me right into the manual that starts with the explanation, and that's on this part. This is the end of another thing, but here it's starting. And we can move the screen over if you need to, and you can read this part. And then I went to the next page, and it shows me about attaching the correct uh, foot fit. The embroidery with couching is right here. And I just reread the information as a refresher and showing where the threads and everything go. And you just follow this information if you don't remember. So once I did that, I closed the screen, close, and before I started the design, I wanted to do the background, which I did through the IQ designer. So I'm just gonna go quick on that. I bring in the design, I wanna do the yarn couching. I go back, return, and in the edit, on the edit screen, here's the, um, design my design center and I go in here and I accept that this is the way I want it done and I say memory and it's going to save it into the my design center and say okay this is the deer that I'm going to be stitching on my new piece and before I stitch that I wanted to bring in a background design that I did through the my design center so what I'm going to do is, after you bring in the design that you want to stitch, you're going to go to Edit, and then you're going to save it through the My Design Center, and then you're going to bring it up in My Design Center. So I'm going to go in there right now. Once I've done that, I went through, back to the home, went to My Design Center, and I went into Shapes, up to the flower. There's the deer, and I said OK. I brought it in, but like I said, I wanted to bring in this design. So I went into our stamp area. I went here and I happened to pick what I thought looked like mountains. And that was this design. And when I touch that, I say, okay, you could pretty much pick any color and then say, okay. And then here is a paintbrush. I'm gonna make a mistake. I want you to see what's gonna happen going to stitch just like that. That's not what you want. I'm undoing. I'm going to come to the paint can and now I'm going to touch the area that I wanted to fill. I'm going to make another mistake. I don't want it inside the deer. I want it outside. Undo. I'm going to touch here and that's how I got all this. Then I said next and I said it after give it time. Don't rush like me sometimes. Say okay. So now it would do all of this. After it does this, then you go and delete this part, and then you're gonna get the deer. You can't add the two designs together. So after it embroidered, like I have here in my hoop, I've already done that stitching, and I'm now going to delete that stitching from my screen. So I'm gonna to go to the start again, and I'm gonna to go to embroidery, and here are all the designs that are available for yarn couching that are built in, and there's the deer. So I select him, and I say set, 
And now I'm ready to embroider the deer with the yarn couching. So then we're going to be coming back over here. Okay, so now I'm ready to start with the embroidery, but I got to do a little bit of setup over here. I have yarn. You're going to use a, a yarn that's not too fibrous, something like eyelash. Uh, wouldn't work but this is a general yarn and if you notice it's uh, variegated so it's going to add some more interest um, this happens to be a yarn from a company called Spangle um, and it comes in many colors and what you're going to do is you're going to put your yarn up here or in the back and you want to puddle it so that it's going to feed nicely that it's not going to start pulling the ball of yarn around on the floor and everything. So you're going to feed it up through here. Then you have this attachment that came with your machine. It is not attached to the machine when you get it out of the box. It looks like this. And this is going to clip in to the top of the machine. Come here. There we go. Then I'm going to guide my yarn down through here and then into a groove down there. Now we have the foot. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the foot. This is not the standard embroidery foot. This is specifically for yarn couching, and it came with your machine. Um, you screw it on the same way that you do the regular embroidery foot, but then you've got to adjust where the needle is falling into that tiny little hole. Now, you have this screwdriver that came with the machine that you can use, but I found it it's always sliding out on me. But you also have this screwdriver. I like this one for other reasons, because it won't slide out. So now I get a better grip on it. And when I turn this, it's moving the this part of the foot left and right. It's not loosening the screw. You're just moving the the foot itself where the needle goes through. So I move this. Now, and when I do go to start to embroider, I'm gonna see how the needle and the thread are grabbing the yarn. If I see that it's not grabbing it right, you would go in and readjust this. But once you get it correct, it's gonna go through the whole design just beautifully. But it's just the initial start. Because you have to realize, as it's traveling, it might be going this way and then coming back around. And that's where sometimes things happen where it doesn't grab the yarn. But it's just a matter of readjusting this piece. Now that I got the yarn coming down the guide on the side of the machine, I have to get it into a guide here that's attached to the foot. So once I do that, I'm gonna go here, to go over the top and then it's going to go down into that hole. Now I got to get the yarn through that hole that's in the bottom of the foot where the needle will go and there's a wire that came in a package like this and this wire putting a piece of black fabric behind it so you can see what it looks like. You're going to put the yarn through the hole in the end of the wire. And this is just going to help you pass the yarn through the foot. That's all that's for. And I'm going to get it started. Let me get this out of the way. Let me get it started, and then I'm going to raise the foot so I can pass it through. The reason I lowered the foot was because the needle was so close to it. But once you get that through there, you're going to grab the wire coming out the bottom. and you're going to pull it all the way through, pulling the yarn through. There we go. Let me get the wire out of the way. And then you're going to take up the slack that you've created, which will happen. Good afternoon, so right. And I'm going to bring up, put the foot down. The yarn fell onto the needle which I'm just pulling it away so I could take up more slack. There we go. So now that I got that, please make sure that on the top of the machine you've created the puddle on the top. Okay, now that I'm ready to start, I want to point out something that is very important. A mistake happened, 
and I'm purposely going to leave it and point to point out to you what you should do. If you notice here, I've taken clips. This is after the mistake I made. I took the um, Wonder Clips. These things are great. They're for so many things. I'm putting them, holding the fabric down onto the stabilizer. Um, Wonder Clips come in different sizes. There's really big ones too. They're called jumbos. But these are the average size and I'm placing them around the entire area holding the project to the stabilizer that's hanging out. If you notice, and I'm not going to do it like this because then this is poking in. And when I show you the mistake, you'll understand why. If we come around the other side, look what happened when I walked away from the machine while it was embroidering. The fabric fell in and it embroidered on top of there. That's a mistake. I want you to see that. So that's why it's so good to use the Wonder Clips. So now, before I continue, I want you to see, I'm gonna place Wonder Clips in other strategic places that I would be concerned with, that they don't, the fabric does not fall in. Important. Okay, now that I did that, we're ready to start. Okay, so now we're ready to embroider, but before I touch start, I wanna point out, if you notice right here is the center, and that's where the needle is right now, as far as when you look at the needle and the hoop. But I don't want to start there because what it's going to do is it's going to stitch and then it's going to jump to where it wants to go. So in, instead of that jump, I'm going to go to the advance and backtrack setting and I'm going to advance it one stitch. And when I do that, the whole hoop is going to move to the position where it's going to start to embroider. So now here's where it's going to embroider. It's going to start the embroidery. And I want to also mention that the thread that I have to do the stitching is a thread that I felt complements the yarn that I'm using. So you want to get something cl as close as you could. Ready to start embroidering. And I turned on the laser. That's where the needle's going to go. Isn't that cool? All right, I'm going to hold my two, my embroidery thread and my yarn and I'm ready, I'm gonna put the presser foot down so we got green for go. So now I'm gonna start embroidering. If I see that the needle and thread is not catching the yarn, I might have to make an adjustment on the foot, but let's go. And then at any time, like you should, you already know, I can touch stop and I'm going to trim my tip I'm not I'm not going to trim my um, yarn too short because at the end when it's all finished I'm going to take a large eyed needle and I'm going to thread it and I'm going to pull this yarn to the wrong side of the fabric but this tail I can also get rid of from the embroidery this embroidery thread and we're ready to go again so this is where the magic starts well what I feel is magic this is so cool. Love this stuff. Can't get enough. And you sometimes you'll be watching it and you'll be going, where is it going? What you doing? Just leave it alone. It knows where to go. Okay, I want to point out something. I stopped the machine, and this is just at the end. Wouldn't you know it right at the end? It's making a mistake. This is where I spoke about the needle with the embroidery thread not grabbing the yarn, and it went down with no yarn here. So I'm going to fix that, and I want to show you how to do that. So I let the, I touched the cutter so it trimmed 
the embroidery thread and the bobbin thread and I'm loosening the yarn and get your famous seam ripper or trusty worthy seam rippers I'm loosening the yarn and I'm going to rip out the few stitches that couched the yarn you don't have to worry about ripping these out because when we straighten it out the yarn is going to come down and cover that so I'm going to grab this and I'm undoing a few stitches now these stitches just um, which I didn't mention before I'd like to tell you they're like lightning stitches you know in your regular sewing mode that one lightning stitch that's great for stretch fabrics and how it goes off um, in an irregular shape more almost like a zigzag well these particular stitches are similar to that and the reason they are is that as the needle is going back and forth it's grabbing the yarn well in this one spot it didn't grab it I'm not sure why but it's not the end of the world so what we, I just loosened them and I'm bringing down the yarn a little bit and I'm gonna come back to my screen and I'm going to back it up stitches to where it was catching the yarn so I'm moving back to where it left off where it wasn't grabbing the yarn if that makes sense and I think it does All right now that I did that I'm going to take up the slack of the yarn oh I could go forward to two or three stitches and I'm going to lower the needle just to see a little bit more forward that I think is one more two all right take up that slack and I'm going to hold my embroidery thread out of the way and I'm going to put the foot down and ah uh, there I I took up a little bit more slack on the yarn I'm gonna go forward another stitch or two there we go and I'm gonna go and we're gonna start again all better and also look up here I'm gonna leave that look what's happening it's pulling on the uh, ball of yarn just make sure that while it's embroidering that you keep make sure that you got plenty of slack there uh, puddled um, this is not a design I would recommend that you walk away from the machine on for one example of what happened here and another is that you're gonna keep the yarn puddled up on the top this is very important almost done and that one original tail from the beginning again this is why you're not walking away I'm just holding it out of the way so it didn't get caught in this design and there it's jumping and it's done so now I'm gonna just I'm gonna leave another long tail because with a large eyed needle I'm gonna feed that to the wrong side so there we go I hope you enjoyed today's class. I love this stuff. Anything with embellishing, I love. And this is great. So have a good day. And if you have any questions, give us a call. 718-468-5858. Bye.